two, one, here we go. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, coming on the show. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so how's, so where, let me ask you this, where are you, where are you located? I am in Houston, Texas. Okay. Okay. So how has everything been with regard to like training and COVID and everything? Have you guys uh, kind of opened completely up? Oh yeah, Texas is definitely like completely open for business. And I think the governor has stated like we're not going back um, at all. And I don't know what any kind of uh, local officials might try to do, but I know that governors tried to um, in various ways, I think prohibit them from um, putting anything more stringent in place than what he wants to do. Right. Um, I mean, for my husband and I personally, we like many people started buying gym equipment last year. I mean, we had some home gym stuff, but uh, we, we purchased some more and we really almost exclusively train from home now um, and occasionally go out to some local gyms. So um, we're all set. We're, we're blessed. That's a, yeah, that's interesting. Cause I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like I, I started uh, just getting gym equipment, you know, when, when all, everything was happening, the problem was that I ran into is that I think I waited a little bit too long mm -hmm. and what, and the gym equipment became so expensive. It was it's so true. expensive. And so I don't know what the prices are now. Have you bought anything recently? Um, not really recently. We, um, I guess the last stuff we had delivered has, it's probably been like three months at least. Okay. Um, yeah. but even yeah. that was like, you're saying it was, it was back ordered and we had to wait a little while for it, but, um, you yeah. know, we were, we were getting by with what we had. It was all right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no worries. Uh, absolutely. That's yeah. That's, I think that right now I'm just going to constantly just train from, from home. And then, like you said, just occasionally, maybe, you know, just for kicks and giggles, go out somewhere else, Exactly. And, you know, so, so how did you, uh, just get, get into training in general and training and fitness? Yeah, it was, um, you know, fitness was something that, you know, from a young age playing sports that I always enjoyed being active. And then my husband was actually a power lifter in high school. And so when he and I were in college together, he got me really into the weight room with him in college. And so I've been lifting steadily since college and didn't really get serious um, into trying a show and doing bodybuilding until um, I saw some ladies at my gym doing it, but um, my husband and I wa knew we wanted to start a family. So mm -hmm. kind of put, just put that on the back burner. And then um, once, um, you know, the kids were a little bit older, decided it was the right time to, to try competing and jumped in. And then, you know, as they say, the rest is history. It's like you do that one show and then um, it's just kind of like the, the bug bites you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, for sure. It's one of those like very, uh, very like addictive things. It's, yes. you know, you know, it's, a. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like, I used to be involved in a lot of uh, like grappling, like uh, wrestling, jujitsu, mm -hmm. like it, those sports are also very addictive, very hard to like, and I think it has something to do with, with the individualism of it all. Like you're by yourself, like it's all on you, you know, essentially you're trying right you're putting it and you're out there if you win it's you know glory is yours if you lose it's kind of like all on you so to speak so i That's think right. i think it's one of those things when did you uh when did you get your pro card i earned my pro card um actually along with my husband in the same show it was awesome. it, yeah it was super magical <laughs> Um, it was at Universe 2019, so okay. Okay. Um, I guess now we're celebrating two years as pros, and um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's something we'll get to. But you know, kind of getting ready, ramping up for for this year's uh, season, so to speak, for myself. Yeah, um, it's yeah, that's exciting to to win a pro card with your husband on the same show. That must have been quite a party afterwards. Like you guys, <laughs> you guys for found... sure. Yeah, we ate all the foods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if, for those who don't know, like what division do you compete in? I compete in figure. Um, I did two shows as a bikini competitor, just starting, and then moved up to figure after that. Although I would say I didn't really have. Um, you know, the muscle mass, even then getting into figure. And I feel like even since that time, since it's been several years, um, you know, I've been, I've been chasing the uh, division itself because, right. you know, as you know, it, everybody's evolving at the same time. And so, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's a constant, um, a constant race mm -hmm. just to, to keep up with the division. 
Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I do see where you're coming from, and I'm, I was going to touch on that a little bit later. But let me ask you this: What, why mm -hmm. figure? If you're chasing the division, like, what made right. you decide to go to figure? Not stay. In it's funny because I feel like if I would have stayed in bikini, you know, like bikini might would have come up to where I was. <laughs> but um, like you said earlier. Um, the challenge of it, you know, obviously it's nice. I mean, if you're already, if you, once you fit the mold or the criteria for the division, then, um, I mean, I guess you're more in like a maintenance mode. Mm -hmm. And so it's not as challenging in the gym, which I guess in some ways can be great. Yeah. Um, if you're not having to like work too hard and you're just like fine tuning, like that's nice in and of itself. But originally I moved from bikini because like I alluded to playing sports as a kid, um, I played soccer and so I had soccer legs, you know, I had larger legs than what the bikini division um, really was looking for. And, and um, so rather than trying to lose muscle that would help me fit into that yeah. um i decided to try to move up yeah that's a strange thing when people talk about like i have to like lose muscle or not yeah. work out for for a particular to fit a particular division that's just like for me that's like mentally odd like yeah the, because because you're the whole point of bodybuilding is to build up your body so when you mentally have to say oh i'm not gonna train Right. to fit a division it's like that that's so we it's just a weird concept right. to think of you know yeah. um so so with that um as far as like everybody kind of you know becoming more more muscular and all the divisions and you just mentioned that maybe if you stayed in bikini you probably just bikini will catch up with you right uh, but what do you think about that do you think that's like a like a positive you think it's a negative like like what do you think about everybody kind of across the board getting bigger. Right. Um, I will say for myself personally, I mean, none of us is getting younger, right? We're all fighting time and age and all of those things. So for me, it's personally um, a struggle. And sometimes um, it's hard. It's hard to say, like looking at pictures versus being in person, because I'm always looking at pictures thinking, oh, wow, she looks like she looks huge. Like, you know, her back is is humongous. But then when you see people in person, I feel like they don't look as big as they do in the pictures. And I don't know mm -hmm. what that is um, or why that is. But, um, you know, I certainly at sometimes it can be just personally frustrating for me because honestly, I'm at, at a point where I really like the look of my physique and my body. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, there are always things that we can tweak that would make us better, um, you know, little areas that you would love to improve on. But for the most part, I really like my look. And so if the goal is to continue to add muscle, because that's where the division is going, sometimes I question you know, whether I want to keep doing that and keep trying, like, do I want to try to strive for that criteria? Do I want to just keep improving myself? And if that means I'm not placing as high as I might otherwise, but I'm still again, achieving a better physique for myself, but one that I want to live in every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> then, you know, maybe that's okay. Um, you know, I, I don't have any, um, delusions of grandeur, you know, I don't, I'm never going to win the Olympia. I mean, or never even get to the Olympia. And, um, while that would be an amazing feat and I would love to say that I did that, um, it doesn't define me. It's not, um, something that I'm want, willing to try to get to at all costs. So I feel like I answered your question. It probably no, no, said yeah. a lot more than what you were asking. For. No, I, that was great. That was great. I love like when people uh, get like a little deeper into like what, you know, what we're talking about, because that is kind of true, right? Like, it, so bodybuilding is different from any other sport because other sports like they you have skills right and the, you, mm -hmm. you perform the skill and then you go and you right. live your life in bodybuilding your body is the skill so it's like but you right. also live in it so like you said you, I, I have to live in it so to to change yourself into something that you're not comfortable with outside of bodybuilding is is it could be problematic, right? Because you're gonna, I mean, you might do better on stage, but if you don't like the way you look, you have to live in that body for, you know, 99% right. else outside of the stage. So that's right. That's, yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. And you know, a few years back, I, I remember the IFBB putting out a memo that was 
you know, something to the effect that they wanted um, certain divisions or maybe even across the board, I don't remember the exact language of it, but that they wanted to, to kind of rein in the, um, the amount of muscle. And I don't think that ever happened. And I mean, it's, it's tough, I'm sure as judges, because you're judging the people that come to the competition. And if people aren't heeding that um, advice or that direction, then the judges have to just judge based on, you know, who shows up and, and how they're presenting their physique. So yeah, no, absolutely I mean, it's, true. <laughs> it's hard not, I mean, it, it's just the nature of the sport to evolve and try to push the limits. And so, right, right. Yeah. It's kind of like, like you said, nature of the sport, nature of the beast. It's like, sometimes like, it's hard to reel it back once Pandora's box has been kind of open. I mean, that's, that's essentially what they tried to do with uh, like uh, women's bodybuilding, right? They, they, yeah. they stopped it thinking that it was kind of getting out of hand. And then right. they, you know, they did the women's physique and then the women, women's physique girls started becoming really large and, uh, mm-hmm. and now they brought up ba- women's bodybuilding back. So it's right. like, so it, it just seems like it doesn't, there's not a really a clear cut way to uh, make the adjustments. So it is, it's just going to be one of those things where you as an individual are going to have to make that decision for yourself, you know? Yep. Yeah. So what, what are your, um, what are your plans for, you know, upcoming, uh, as far as com- competitions are concerned? Yes, um, working with my coach, Whitney Jones, um, she and I have a plan for the year. My first show will be, um, as of right now, (laughs) will be the Savannah Pro, which this past Saturday was six weeks out. And um, and then after that, there's um, obviously there's the Arnold and like the Olympia. And again, I'm not like saying I'm going to be there, but just those are two big events that are happening, um, you know, a few weeks after that. And so um, I'll probably, you know, not compete um, for several weeks and then um, jump back into like a Wings of Strength show that's um, in, I think it's late October. Um, and then there's an, a show in Austin. So that's like totally drivable for me. Um, I've never been able to compete as a pro in Texas. Um, so I would love to do the show that's happening in Austin in November. Um, so those are kind of what I'm what thinking right now. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Savannah, then if I just actually came back from Savannah, so we were on the beach there for a little bit. So oh, nice. it was so, so fun. Uh, yeah. But that will be, um, if you win that, then you will qualify right for the Olympia. Yeah. Yes, I do believe it's an Olympia qualifier. Right. Um, but I'm sure as we get closer to the Olympia, you know, like yeah. more and more women are coming out chasing that qualification. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. My, my best showing um, to date as a pro is, I think, uh, ninth place at Wings of Strength last year mm-hmm. um, when they moved that Phoenix show um, to December. Yeah, it's it, it's strange because like sometimes you'll see people that don't do as well and all of a sudden they'll start doing well, especially in women. Like I've noticed that in women, yeah. um, like you'll, you'll have people that like start doing better. And I don't know if I, that's attributed to the people are improving or or um, the judges are just noticing noticing them yeah. more. It could be like a combination of both. So you could, I mean, easily go from ninth and yeah. jump and jump to you know like something very close to first, mm-hmm. if not first. So well, I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Are you planning to uh, go see the Olympia in Arnold? Or in yes, the- for sure, yeah. uh, we'll be at the Olympia. Actually, my husband um, is a sponsor of the Olympia oh, this year. Cool. He started sponsoring it last year, so we will definitely be there. Um, um, the Arnold, I think we're undecided since it's not having the big expo and it's actually not having figure, which I was um, disappointed to see, but I mean, I know that they're just trying to have the show. Huh. Um, yeah, but my husband is uh, a classic physique competitor. And so the Arnold is having classic physique. So I'm sure he would love to be there just to, um, you know, see the show. And so they're not, that's so strange. I did not know that, that they're not having women's physique or women, I'm sorry, figure. That's right. I'm, I think it's just a bikini fitness, classic physique and uh, bodybuilding, if I'm not mistaken. I wonder what the reasoning behind that is. I mean, why, why take out figure? I mean, why keep the, like, <laughs> you know, why keep the other ones yeah. and not figure? Cause I mean, if, if you would say, well, it's more mainstream, like it's not as mainstream, but you have women's physique and, you know, so. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. 
Uh, you said your husband <laughs> is sponsoring um, which show? The uh, the Olympia. He's an Olympia, Olympia sponsor. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's kind of exciting. Is, has he done yeah. it before or? Uh, yeah. So last year was the first year that we um, became an Olympia sponsor, mm -hmm. and um, just with the way everything was going, we could we knew that sponsors were pulling out of the show. Um, so it felt like a good opportunity to go in and really support the event in the sport of bodybuilding because you know it's something he and I do together. Um, it's something that I would say really has changed our lives um like that's not i don't think that's an overstatement to say that um because right. it's changed every aspect of, of how we live and think about things and um and because it's something that we enjoy um helping others do so yeah he's um it, i don't know if you're familiar but he's a plastic surgeon so um, oh, he actually specializes in athletes um so we sponsor a lot of local shows as well um in the mpc and so that was just sort of it's like the next step up um right. for us right. right yeah that's a that's a big deal i mean that's the biggest yeah. show around right outside of arnold <laughs> absolutely so. that's a big deal that's and that's a huge uh like blessing to have him in the industry and be a sponsor yes. because you Absolutely. know that's that there's a lot of com competitors um you know they're that that are looking for for plastic surgeons they're looking for that kind of work Absolutely. and it's you know it's a big deal now so for sure yeah. um so it's, who would you say like i guess is your favorite uh, as far as like figure is concerned like to win this upcoming olympia I mean, I, I struggle to see how, um, as long as Sydney Gillian's competing, that anyone's going to be able to knock her off that throne. I mean, her physique is just so phenomenal. Um, I mean, of course, there are a lot of amazing physiques, a lot of hardworking women, and I don't discount that at all. But um, she's just got, um, you know, a mix of, um, I think just the natural um, aesthetics mm -hmm. that are pleasing for the figure division, um, that X frame with that small little waist and, you know, beautiful big shoulders and back and um, and legs as well. And so, yeah, she's, Sydney's my favorite for sure to win. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it would be hard to knock her off. It's, but like once she, she won it, it was like, you could see the writing on the wall, right? Like it would yeah. be, it's, she's so young too. So it's like yes. before, before she can, you know, so, so Ronnie and others started losing when they got older, when their physiques mm -hmm. couldn't like hold anymore. And it's like, yeah. she's so young, she's going to hold that physique for, you know, forever. Right, right. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah, definitely. I think it'll be hers to, you know, kind of step back when she wants to you know right. i mean i know she got married last year after the olympia so you know if she wants to start a family then you know i'm sure that'll be the time that she steps back and um like candace lewis carter you know who had yeah. a baby recently and so yeah we'll see yeah. yeah interesting interesting so what would you say the biggest um Problem. I don't, I don't want to use the word problem, but like, what what is the biggest issue or concern with being like a, a female like bodybuilder, a female competitor? Like, is there something that that um, kind of like you would say you would not warn women, but just kind of let them know like this is something that you should look out for? Anything you know that comes to mind? Um, I would say. I mean, for me in my own personal experience um, and just some things that have been swirling around in the Houston kind of bodybuilding community recently is um, choosing a coach that's mm -hmm. right for you, um, doing your research on a good coach, um, finding someone that is, um, you know, has a track record and is well-respected and, um, you know, isn't trying to, force you into, um, you know, if, if it's not in your, um, if you don't desire to take a lot of uh, PEDs, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing, if you are looking to do this um, sustainably for the long term. So thinking about, you know, your metabolism and not like crash dieting kind of thing. Yeah. Um, someone that's just really going to work with you. I would say that's the biggest thing. I mean, for men and women really is just to right. think about it for the long term. Like don't be in it for the short term trophy, whatever. Um, because it, it is a sport that you can do for a long time. If 
you're smart about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you, and if you surround yourself with the right people that are knowledgeable and, um, and actually have your best interest in mind rather than again, just trying to like sort of increase their war chest. And these are all my athletes that have won all of this, that, and the other. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's and it's interesting that you mentioned that I just had a, a girl on uh, recently that had some issues from um, like coming off of some PEDs and stuff like that. And it's like, it's so important, especially for women um, like uh, that, you know, you really are careful and, and you listen to the right people and you do your that's research right. because it's like uh, for women specifically, it's very difficult like it's hard to come back from those things so it's like it's um you know it just you know genetically speaking and so it's uh it's important and like you mentioned every year it seems like people um always have problems with coaches you know you, it's all you always hear about it like yes. oh this coach did that this coach did this and mm -hmm. often a lot of times it's not even you know it's not even a matter of like the coaches um how can I put this? Like, like you mentioned, they're increasing their, like, they want you there so they, so that you can win something. So then they can say, oh, well, you know, this is my athlete. They won this and then get more, you know, more clients. And you want somebody yeah. that's looking out for your interests, like you said, right. not, not just their own. So yeah. yeah, it has to be mutual, you know, mutual beneficial relationships. So. Absolutely. Uh, so when you, um, when you chose your coach, um, mm -hmm. did you, was how did you come about in doing that? I started off with local coaches. So people mm -hmm. that I could be face to face with here in Houston, because that's what I was most comfortable with um, being new in the sport. Right. And then um, once I started getting to that national um, level competing for my pro card, um, you know, I was more open to having someone that was online. And again, I had more experience myself mm -hmm. and actually had to talk about the coaching mostly because I had it, like I said, like my own personal, um, bad experience with a coach. And mm -hmm. so coming off that bad experience, I, um, I almost, I almost wrote it off. I was like, I'm done like mm -hmm. this, you know, it just, it put such a bad taste in my mouth. Um, but then I had seen Whitney at um, the national shows and, you know, just seeing her online persona. I mean, that's really who she is. Like she's super um, sweet, very motivating. Um, it seems like they've got just like a great team there at the pros um, with all the coaches that are there. And um, so I reached out to her and actually I contemplated, I was like, I don't have gymnastics in my background at all, but like contemplated doing fitness just mm -hmm. because um, you know, we talked a little bit about the divisions evolving and like, I felt like, fit, like figure was almost starting to be out of my grasp. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was like, maybe I can just like try to make myself into a fitness commander. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which would be incredibly hard to, um, yeah. cause it has its own set of challenges, of course, mad respect for those women doing those routines. But, um, anyway, she's like, no, you know, you can, like, I think you still have a place in figure kind of thing. And so I just felt like that's a, such a sense of, um, trust and connection with her that that, um, you know, I've been with her now since, um, gosh, like leading up into that, um, that 2019 season where I earned my pro card. So 2018 was when I had the bad experience at universe. Mm -hmm. And then I contacted her literally like a week after that, mm -hmm. um, we did a local show and then did universe and won. So, mm -hmm. um, I've been with her since then and she's amazing and I love her and, um, I can't imagine being with anyone else. Yeah. yeah that's great that, that it worked <laughs> out, but uh, to your point, uh, as far as you know, I'm not advising people just jump coaches or anything like that for any reason. But if you do have a bad experience, if you do run into something where you're not comfortable with, don't be afraid, you know, to make a change right. in your life. Because right. it's like, if you stick with the same person or with the same, and you keep having the same issues, you, you know, mm -hmm. it could be very troubling later on. So absolutely. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, do you think it's possible on the on the um, pro stage to train yourself to coach yourself, or you think that's like l right now probably a not real realistic? Um, and not I, you specifically, but right, just right. Is it? Yeah, athlete. I know of a few pros actually that do, and I assume that they have someone that kind of like 
gives them some sense of reassurance that they're on the right track, you know, maybe looks at their pictures for them or, you know, Mm -hmm. checks in on them. Cause I feel like you need an independent eye, even if you're um, a pro and a coach yourself, Um, because you know how doubt creeps in and that sort of thing um, when you just get to a certain point. And um, I feel like it's better to have a coach because again, you do have that independent um, eye. And then also too, like a lot of the coaches know, nuances of things that I feel like as an athlete, I don't know. So they know they go around to more shows than I go to personally. So they know how certain judges judge. Mm. They know what they're looking for. This judge likes a more feminine look. This judge wants you hard as nails. Like, you know, so if you're depending on who's judging a show, you know how you need to dial yourself in. And so I feel like if you're trying to do it on your own, you might miss those nuances or just like, you know, not know, not think about them, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, but if you've got a coach that's really experienced and, um, you know, really into the sport, then they may be able to help you in that regard. Yeah, that's interesting. I never had I never had anybody answer that question quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, the having a, you know, a second pair of eyes that's not mm-hmm. you is, you know, that's kind of like common. But but about the judges, that's a real interesting, uh, you know, point of view, because you're kind of right. Like if they if they have, you know, several athletes and they kind of are in the sport, like kind of dive, you mm-hmm. know, dove into it, they'll know, you know, who judges how, who's Absolutely. looking for what. And that's something that like, you don't really want to waste your time with when you're trying to prep for a show, you know, that's, that's right. That's, you want, you want your mind as, as relaxed as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to be right. taking notes on judges and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah. So what do you think about um, like the the IVB like adding more divisions? Um, like we have this wellness division has been added. Um, like what are your thoughts on that? I think it's a good move to continue to grow the sport and give um, you know sort of different physiques an opportunity and a place to compete. Um, I think as long as we can continue to differentiate what the looks are for each of the divisions, then it makes sense to be more inclusive. Um, You know, for me and my husband, we've talked about it would be cool um, if they did like a couples division, which I think they did like years back. And like maybe they do over in Europe somewhere. I've seen some things like that. Um, Of course, we would personally love that. Um, But that's not really like mainstream right now. And of course, I feel like too, as um, some well-known bodybuilders and just the sport in general um, ages, they're adding more masters shows and classes and that sort of thing. And I think that's a great way to continue to grow the sport as well. Um, Back in the day, there was a Masters Olympia. Um, And I think it would be cool if, um, even if you don't call it the Olympia, but you have some sort of Masters, like, you you know, show of all shows kind of thing um, in the same style of the Olympia where you have to qualify and that, like, that would be cool because, you know, like I said earlier, I'm not getting any younger, I'm 41. Um, and, it, and that sometimes that's another thing that enters my mind. It's like, why do I keep challenging, challenging myself going up the, you know, against like a Sydney Gillian, who's like 25 years old and at right. her, like her peak, um, right. You know. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you, you're right because it's like, you know, your body changes and it's mm-hmm. you know, the older you get and there's not, there's nothing really you can do about it. I mean, you can train as hard as you want and do as much cardio as you want and get peeled and it's, just not going to look the same. So it's like, so it's really kind of unfair to, you know, to compete against people that are like, you know, whatever, 20 years younger than you, like, that's not, that's not really really realistic. So yeah, like a master's would be awesome. The couples, I know Lee Priest um, did, did, uh, was involved in some of that. And then others also back in the day when uh, with the couples uh, competitions, it was big in Europe, like, Mm because I'm originally from Europe. And it's, it was, it was big in Europe. It's very artistic. And like, yeah, I, I think that would be cool. Like you think of uh, like ice skating, they have individual right. and then they have couples, right? Like, yeah. why not? Why not do yeah. it? You know, so very cool. But yeah, the wellness division now is is becoming like really popular, oh, yeah. very fast. Yes. You know, it's just, it's trending like extremely fast. So I think, I think it's here to stay and yeah, you know, absolutely. So more, more and more girls like start moving into, you know, yeah. into that. So, yeah. But you know, it's an interesting division because, 
it's the first one that's not, um, in my mind, um, intended to be, um, I guess symmetrical is not the right word, but you know, like top to bottom, right. there's that difference in the muscularity that they're looking for between like your upper body development and your lower body development. And so, um, you know, I mean, I don't really care. Like they right. can do whatever, <laughs> whatever they want. Yeah. But um, I just think it's interesting that it's the first division that's um, seems to be in that style. Yeah, and I think it is. I think most other divisions, if not all, I think all, pretty much all, even bikini, like they're all based upon balance. You know, like right. it's it's all about balance. And this is the one where like bottom heavy is what you want to be. It's right. like that's you know, if you're balanced, you're probably not like right. if, yeah, you're not in the correct division. So right. yeah, interesting, interesting. Like, do you um, is there someone there that you think is gonna take? I don't know how well you keep up with wellness. Do you? Yeah, actually, I've been watching it just because it is so interesting um, because it's so new. And to your point, a lot of people um, are really you know jumping into it, and there are a lot of competitors that like they're already meeting that criteria, and I'm like, wow, um, it's really impressive. But um, I mean, Angela I, Borges, I think is yeah. how you say her last name. She's um, incredibly impressive. Of course, she won the first um, show this year to be Olympia qualified. And so I, I think, I you know, I think she has a really strong chance of winning at the Olympia. Um, Sunny uh, Andrews came actually and visited with my husband. Oh, very um, cool. Yeah, since she's a doctor as well. And um, so, you know, I'd love to see Sunny do well just because um, we have that, you know, little connection. But yeah. um, it's going to be it's going to be a great Olympia for sure. Yeah, I thought I talked to a few months ago. I talked to Angela's uh, coach and mm -hmm. he he was telling me I didn't realize it, but she's technically i believe the most winningest wellness competitor is she um, yeah she's won like multiple shows prior to even the wellness being in ifbb you know so okay. i think i think what's going on is that you have a lot of girls that have already been competing in wellness in like hispanic countries yeah. and so they're already like at that high level yeah. you know yeah. and and all that the and all the other girls are trying to like catch up to that level mm -hmm. so it's going to be a few years before before you know i think the other countries started kind of getting to that same you know same level so yeah. but yeah interesting yeah very cool yeah sunny um i saw was it i thought and i saw maybe on your stories or, or picture that she came down and uh, mm -hmm. hung out with you guys so that was yeah. that was pretty exciting yeah, yeah very cool so how um so how is your like training set up do you train tend to train heavy or are you like more of a volume trainer um well it it depends um, on the season, obviously in prep, um, you know, you lose some of your strength as your, as you, yeah. <laughs> as your uh, food declines, but um, for the most part, still training pretty heavy. And again, chasing um, that figure uh, look really. So yeah, I would say I tend to train heavier than um, train more in volume, unless it's something like shoulders, which I feel like don't really need to be trained. Um, heavy, but legs for sure heavy, um, yeah. back heavy. Yeah. Do you, uh, like, what would be your, if you were to say, what's the best, like, body part that you have right now? Like, what would you? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> like, um, I would say, um, I, I get a lot of compliments on um, my quads, actually. So I guess I would say that. Um, and I don't carry, about. like some women carry like their weight or that's the last place they lose it. But I feel like I've, you know, I have a lot of definition in my quads pretty well year round, even in off season. Um, so I've been trying to bring up hamstrings and, and glutes to, to match that. Um, and my back is something I feel like I've been forever working on. Um, but yeah. Yeah, got it. So you said your back has been something that you've been working on? To like, mm -hmm. is, so you would say that's the part that like needs the most work, I guess. That was my yes. next question. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, that's the feedback from the judges coming out of last year's shows was just to add um, more depth in my back. And width is probably pretty good. I mean, but obviously wider is better because then it gives that illusion of the small waist, even if you don't have the smallest waist. Right. So always working on that still too, but, um, but depth has been the biggest thing. Yeah. Jay Cutler kind of ran into that where his waist wasn't the smallest, but he was so wide that like, you know, that you yeah. could, you weren't really paying attention to his waist because right. they, they had that <laughs> You're illusion. Just like, wow. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So do you do, um, 
do you do like any kind of uh, assistance as far as like helping, um, you know, other girls or competitors or anything like that, coaching, training, anything like that? No, um, I'm not a coach or a trainer um, individually. Just this year, I started doing like group fitness instruction. So I'm a, uh, a rowing coach actually at a rowing oh, studio wow. here near my house, which has been really cool for me because I do really love fitness and I love helping other people, but um, not quite ready to be like a personal trainer um, and not sure if I really even want that period. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so not, not so, I mean, here and there, you know, obviously yeah. I'll, I'll help people that have questions or right. whatnot, but yeah, no training. But my husband and I did just start um, moving more into show promotion. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we created our own promotion company and we're working with Sean Ray um, on his uh, Hawaiian classic show that's happening in oh. November. So we're awesome. super excited to be working with him on that. Um, and so that's another way that we're trying to like extend our, um, you know, presence in bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's definitely like a, a, a much more, how can I put this? A much more of a major step than coaching, you know, is promoting shows right. is a big, is, is, you're it in is a big deal. It's really yeah. involved. <laughs> yeah. You're in there. You're like, that's, uh, that's something. That, so you said Hawaii, huh? In, in what month? Yeah. November? November. Yeah. November 20th. Um, yeah. In uh, Waikiki beach. Yeah, well, Hawaii is going to be beautiful no matter what month you go in there. So yes. it's going to yeah. be perfect location. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, you said you did mention something I'm kind of curious about. You said a rowing mm -hmm. classes, like you mean yeah. rowing, like rowing, the, the kind of rowing that you would do, like on a boat, that kind of rowing. Uh, that... It's right. The, you know, the concept to um, rowing machines that yeah. a lot of the um, mm -hmm. just box gyms have. So it's that. So it's kind of like a... Um, you know, like a cycle studio, but we just have a bunch of ergs in the room. And so, um, yeah, we row to music and then <laughs> we'll get off the rower a few times uh -huh. in the class and do like light dumbbell work. And, um, so that's fun for me too, because that kind of stuff, obviously that's right in my wheelhouse. And, yeah. um, I feel like, um, coming for me, it's, uh, authentic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's very cool. Like, I, I mean, I don't know if it's, is that common? Like, have you seen those, you know? Like no, actually. Um, so the, the studio I work for is called Row House and it is a, um, a, a chain, but it's uh -huh. not, um, I mean, there's only one other, I mean, Houston's a huge city and there's only one other one in the Houston, the greater Houston area. Um, so it's a growing brand. It's kind of small. I, I've heard of like one other studio that I don't even think is really, um, a franchise, yeah. um, like Row House is, I think it's more of just like a one-off. So yeah, not very common, but it's great because it's low impact, um, and it's effort-based. So yeah. Um, if you've got people that are new to fitness, then it's a way for them to, um, you know, for them to approach it easily and at their own, you know, kind of meet them where they are. So yeah, speak. yeah, definitely low impact. That's, that's such yeah. a big deal as far as like a lot of people have issues with like knees, especially, mm -hmm. old, you know, if you're getting a little yes. older or you've been into athletics for a long time and your knees are like one of the first things to go. So it's, yes. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, something like that is incredible. That's, uh, that's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're extremely busy promoting shows and such with your husband. <laughs> right. But um, but if anybody wanted to reach out to you for like questions or maybe have you on another podcast or, you know, talk yeah. about different promotions that you've got going on with your husband, um, like what would be the best way to reach out to you? Thank you for that. Uh, yes, I am on Instagram at Corey Morales underscore IFB Pro and um you know you could just dm me there that's fine um i don't have a website but our production company does have a website it's fitdocproductions.com um so you know you can find us there and um that that's also fitdoc productions on instagram too so either of those two ways is a great way to reach out great and i'll i'll put everything at the bottom guys so you, Sweet. Can, you can click on that and Corey, thank you again for your time thank I you really appreciate it take care absolutely take care bye-bye